Well, hello again. So, here we are. We are going to make some colourful needle holders from silk clay. Now, we did do these during the retreat and I know some of you are flock members so you might have to make them again. But I'm just going to go to the overhead camera. This is my, this is the one that is working. And um, the needle holders could look like this and they are actually very personal to you. So you can make them ergonomic so that you can hold them in your finger, mold them around um, so that they fit just exactly you. Now there's also, um, there's also one where um, I've managed to do it so that you can, you can take the needle out and you can insert it again. And it's quite, it stays quite sturdy. So if the needle breaks, you don't have to throw the whole thing away. And um, I've, got, I've done one where the needles are side by side. I've done one where they are like a three needle felting tool. Um, um, so like form like a triangle. And um, of course in your, um, in your box you didn't just get this try me um, silk clay you also got some needles to try and um, and they are special needles they are special needles that you might not have ever tried so that is something that um, um, I want to talk about as well because not only I'm just gonna see if I can zoom in uh, that, that um, overhead camera a little bit more um, so you can see it a little bit closer up before it gets so just stay where you are I'm gonna do all the moving here we go so basically this just to remind you um, you've also got a little leaflet that tells you all of our needles but just to remind you what's written in the newsletter um, a note from me happy new year flockers this month is all about needles and letting you try some of the more specialist felting needles namely the twisted star cross star both medium and the fine reverse felting needle needles and your preference are very personal and you can also change your mind quite regularly personally i have always loved the twisted needles but most recently have taken more to the triangular st standard ones it is good to try other styles and i will give you as much information as i can on what different needles are best used for i will also explain to you the structure of a felting needle all during our second flock gathering in 2024 that's what we're doing right now be prepared for more educational parts during the gathering however we will also have a little fun with modeling the silk clay i can highly recommend to have some food dyes ideally powder at the ready sharpie pens will do too or any other powder dyes such as for candle making are good you can of course decorate the white silk clay once dry with nail varnish or paints as well if you prefer the lanolin rich core in your sheep's watch sample this month remains our best selling and favorite core wool and if you have never tried it you will love this tool one can never have enough well let me tell you that we're actually out of stock right now and we are truly out of stock of that one because um i think we're waiting for more sheep to be shorn <laughs> that's always the trouble with a wool you can't make it yourself you have to wait for the sheep to um to uh, produce it and then for it to get warm enough so that they can uh, be sure and we can't just take it off them sooner we we made that joke that um i'm gonna cause all these sheep to have their lanolin rich core wool taken off prematurely and they're all freezing um their little little bits off so yeah we have to wait for for the wool to be um to be available again so hopefully fingers crossed that's not too long so um let's talk a little bit about felting needles so i <clears throat> this is something where's this um this long felt, this is big, big, big felting needle gone. You might have seen me use this before. I tidied my desk up the other day. It's never a good idea because I knew where I put it and now I don't know where, where it is. But the structure of a felting needle is, and I have got like a ginormous big felting needle that I sometimes use just to, to show. Ah, here it is. I'm going to go overhead again and I'm just going to show you um, how a felting needle is made up and how what so I'm going to tell you a little bit about it I could only open that flipping case why is it not opening what does it work oh, oh my god <laughs> it works like that they jump out at me good job they're um, really big um, right so let's have a look so felting needles these are ginormous big felting needles and I'm going to use a white background if I can find one there so if you look at this 
camera come really close. So the felting needle has got little notches in the tip of the needle. Now sometimes people call them barbs and I actually I'm not I'm not sure it's true that they're barbs. I think they're more indentations and notches. I don't know how clearly you can see that under the camera there. But um, that part of the needle, this part here from here where it's slimmer, is the working part of the needle. And then you've got the shaft of the needle and then you've got that sort of the, that crooked bit here. Now the reason why the needle is constructed like this is because they are actually not made to be held in your hand. They're made to sit in industrial felting machines and they um, go, there's thousands of them, they go up and down and up and down like you, like the motion of you felting, that's what the needles do. And they, um, they basically um, tangle up the fibers as you push them in into the wool. Now, I always say that they're notches because when you run your finger um, along the needle in the uh, uh, from the top to the base, you shouldn't really feel any any barbs. And there are, and on this one you don't, but on this one you do. It feels like uh, um, when you when you stab it in, obviously you catch the wool, and when you pull it out, it's smooth, which would you wouldn't um, necessarily have that with a with a with a barb. So I'm gonna. I'm going to continue calling it notches. If people call it barbs, so be it. So that is the that is basically the construct of a needle. Now, when you look at this needle and you look at it straight on, it has a triangular shape. So your needle has got that shape. I draw it here for you. So if you take a cross section of the needle, it looks like that, right? straight on if you cut it in half and look at it straight on and then you have these notches in there like that and these are the cores for catching the wool now you can get needles um, and I'm just going to remind myself what you've got there you've got um, the cross star needle and you've got the twisted star needle so you can get needles that look like that if you take a cross section, which is the cross star needle, and then it's got the notches in the sides like this. Now, if you imagine, you've got all these X. You what you can put here is one, two, three on each. You might you and obviously you space them out going along, but on here you've got way more space to put all these notches. So this is actually a more efficient needle. And then you can also get um, a, a cross star needle and a cross star needle looks like this if you take a cross section there. That is the standard triangular needle, what we call standard. This is the cross star and this is the, well, the one that we have is a twisted star, which means it has actually got, um, it's also twists um, so it's slightly twists that way and you might be able that's not the one you might be able to see that well you can certainly see it when you look at it but I'm just gonna see if I can zoom in even a little bit more this might all go terribly wrong now because I don't know how much I can zoom in 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 before it gets blurry so I don't know if you can see this, but if I turn the needle, you should be able to see that it's slightly twisted. So it looks like a bit like a screw, but much more spaced out. So the um, the reason why I like, um, or why I've used the twisted needles a lot, is because they are really easy to stab into wool. So for example, I don't know if I got, oh I've got a robin here, let's use this, sorry robin, I'm going to get stuck now. So try it out, it's actually really, really, it's quite a, um, so I'm using the, um, the cross star needle now, it's quite a vicious, I mean I say a vicious needle, it's a very hard working needle, it's a medium needle but it feels more like a coarse needle. And then the um, the twisted star needle is very similar. So they 
they work very um, they're very ferocious felters they feel more like a, um, a coarse needle when you stab it into it but they are medium needles and then of course we have um, to completely uh, confuse everybody we've got we've put a, um, a reverse needle in there now the reverse needle does exactly the opposite from what the other needles do once you've got something felted down they pull the wool out so if I do this the white wool that's inside that brown ring is coming to the surface and that um, requires planning if you're using the reverse needle because you might want to make a fuzzy or wiry surface and you might want to pull the fibers out and you can see it has a certain effect it gives sort of a certain fluffy effect on top um, the fine uh, reverse needle is quite gentle doing this but we also do a coarse felting needle and it, it, it your your shape has to be felted down very very solidly and so it's quite satisfying to create sort of almost like a, a different surface so this is what it was before and this is what I've um, made it do by pulling the white out now you plan this in that you have the inside in the color that you want to obviously pull out at the end of it and it does need to be firmly felted especially with a coarse reverse needle so hopefully this has sort of made a little bit of sense now the silk clay the reason why people don't like it is probably because or why they struggle to work with it is probably because it dries up quite quickly and you might even take it out of the out of the bag and it feels quite dry so what you need to do is if it feels really um, solid like this one feels quite hard to knead you just need a tiny little bit of water so I'm just going to pour a tiny bit of water in this in this uh, lid here a tiny bit of water and then you're going to just wet your fingers and then you're going to use that to mix it into the silk clay and if you and repeat it because it already has made such a difference just adding a tiny bit of water into the silk clay to um, make it more it, it, it can instantly feel how it wants to smooth out um, so you can repeat this but do it very gently don't put too much water in because it can get really really slimy and um, and, and and too soft and if you um, um, if you want to um, store it and you're not a hundred percent sure how um, waterproof your container is then you can um, add just the tiniest amount of water into it as well and it will just um, the condensation of the water will just make sure that the um, silk clay stays nice and supple so um, you often don't need need that much you don't need to need that much make sure you've got clean hands <laughs> mine is getting very grubby <laughs> should have washed my hands before so I'm just gonna pinch a bit off and put the rest away so to store it, what I would do is literally just a drop of water in there. That's it. Okay. And then keep it nice and airtight or as airtight as you can. And um, I'm going to show you how to use Sharpie pens to color your silk clay in. And that you can add... Um, powder in there but with powder obviously you will have to maybe add a little bit of water I wouldn't use liquid um, liquid um, dyes because that will definitely make it very liquid so what I do is I use um, sharpie pens so let's use that purple here and I'm literally coloring it in on the outside you might end up with a slightly discolored fingers but you end up with lovely marble effect um, silk clay 
and then maybe some yellow here on the other side. You can just use normal felt tip pens, they don't have to be waterproof. Already got pink fingers. And then you start kneading it and roll it. So if you want a marbled effect, then don't knead it too much because you can see it's already happening here. The colors are already happening. Um, and then just add a little bit more. Depends how, how colored you want it to be or add another color, add another purple. Can't really tell the difference between the purples. So you don't want to mix it too much because you might end up with a brown ball if you've got too many different colors in there. Maybe put a bit of red in there. Just color it in a little bit. And then maybe a bit more yellow on this side. And um, if you, you can actually hear, I didn't have any green. I just did this green with, uh, with uh, yellow and, and blue. So let's give it a little mix. And there we have a really nice marbled um, color and I've got a very red finger. So, so once you've got your desired color, you can do, imagine you're making a needle holder and somebody actually made a flat one at the retreat, which I thought was really clever because if you're holding, if this is a good place, a good way to hold your needle, then keep it exactly like this. So shape the, um, if this feels good, then that's a good uh, way to start making your needle up, a uh, needle holder up. And then you are, um, if you're making the needle holder so that you can take the needle out, you're actually inserting the needle with the end going in first, and then you're going in and twisting it straight. Now that creates a channel that you can retract and do in reverse. And do that a few times Make sure it's the right shape there. And then just leave that to dry. So it needs to be fully dried. And remember, you can take the needle in and out. You just have to remember which that you are going in and it sits in there. It, it, will, um, it will not fall out because it's got that hook bit at the end but you will be able to take it out. So if this is something for you to hold comfortably, then leave it to dry entirely. Once they are dry, like this one here, for example, they will remain a little bit of a sponginess. Now I've made this a few weeks ago, but I can still ever so slightly squeeze it. And, um, and this is the one where I can take the needle out and pop it back in. And that's exactly what you can do with this. And you can only do this because you remain a little bit of elasticity in that silk clay, which makes it possible for you to take the needle, um, put it in and out. And then once you've done that, once the needle is dry, you've made your very own needle tool that hopefully suits your individual needs of your fingers, however you're holding it. And, um, and then of course you can um, add one needle like this, or you can um, get the silk clear out again. Let's see what happens if I mold. This is so much more supple now than it was even before I took it out of the bag. So you don't have to put up with a uh, silk clay that feels, um, feels too hard to knead. I'm just gonna clean my fingers up. <laughs> on this one <laughs> and um, there might be enough color on my fingers to make a new colorway. Of course you can color it in in a completely even color just um, basically keep kneading it so that it becomes um, just one color and um, I'm gonna stick with um, probably sort of a red and purple theme here. Um, just color it in a bit more I quite like the marbled effect. And you can do all of this with white. So you don't need to, um, you need to, don't need to buy lots of silk clay because you're only using tiny amounts. 
um, you can sort of try and cover up the colour before you touch it. it. Sometimes helps to keep your fingers slightly unmarked. Um, and roll it between your hand because that gives it that marble effect. And add a bit more. If you prefer, you can just make your needle holder and then you can colour it in afterwards. You can, oh dear, I've got some on my mat, mat now. You can, um, <clears throat> you can use nail varnish, works really well. Um, or you can uh, use paints, acrylic paints. Um, Sharpie, we can colour it in with Sharpie afterwards, draw patterns on it. Um, so just to prove that, if I use this one here, that's dry, that's one of the ones I, I did before, I can literally just add little, little dots. all around so you can make up your own shapes why not somebody at the retreat did a snail as a shape you can um, you could do it a, a toadstool um, so color it in I think using uh, pe uh, paints or colors that don't come off if you touch them is probably a good idea but you don't need to do that to get that marbled effect. So that's it really. See, you can paint it afterwards. Um, doesn't have to be all done um, to start with. Now, the one thing that I will say that you need to pay attention to, if you're making your tool and you go in and you go in again, Sorry, got fluff on my needles here. Say you make um, a three needle tool or two needle tool. When you are putting it down to dry, you have to make sure that the needles are parallel to each other. So don't let them make, just find that white background here again. Don't allow them to be like this. That's not gonna work or like that that's not going to work either. They need to be absolutely properly lined up. And then you um, you have the best needle there, the best needle tool there. You can still shape it afterwards. You can put the needles in and then shape it. There's, um, there's no limits to it. Try it out. You've got quite a bit of silk clay you can play with and, uh, and see what works for you. What, you know, you can have it like a, um, a rest, um, like a blob, so it, it's, it rests in your hand, um, but when you dry when you dry your tool, make sure the needles are lined up parallel. And um, of course, if you're planning to take them out, then you must forge that path by taking by putting the needle in and out a couple of times, just so that you know it works when it's dry. Just forge that path a couple of times. That's it, really. Um, very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, read some of the comments here because there might be some questions that I'm missing and I haven't looked at any of them. Um, so, okay, let's have a look. Oh, lo lots of questions. <clears throat> okay, hang on a second. The more sides, the more notches helps to stop more and pull together. Thank you, Colette. That's exactly it. Um, so Annie says she's intrigued about these needles. She's never even heard about them. Okay, I've got it. Oh, 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 okay. That I think that's the beginning. Um, Oh dear, sorry, there's some funny comments. That's, um, okay, here we go. I've never used silk clay before, so looking forward to trying this, says Anne. I've tried, oh, Colette is talking about my daughter, which um, is another subject altogether. Um, so, um, the, Terry says, hello, Terry. Um, nice to have you here. 
um, hope everyone has had a great month. So far, so good. Though I will be say, I will say that January is not necessarily my most favourite month of the year. Um, I've started using the yellow cross star needle and a lot, um, and a lot, a lot, and love it. Um, so poor Robin now has a headache late in the day, more like a poorly wing. Um, Annie says, "Oh my God." Just trying them as you're talking. They're really different from anything else I've used. And I can see where I might enjoy the reverse one. Clever stuff. Colette says, reverse needles great for fluffing up vintage bears that are stubbed very tightly to hold the shape. But after finished the make, you can fluff it up without changing the shape. And remember, you can not just fluff it up, but you can also bring out um, a different color fluff by planning what you're putting inside. Angie says, I love trying the different needles and it's great you color code them. All kept snack in your needle boxes now. Oh, thank you. Uh, Katrina says, it's very frustrating if you get the reverse needle <laughs> when you need a regular one. It took me a while to figure out um, when my wool wasn't felting down. Oh, I hate, I hate stuffing a re reverse needle into a felting mat when you, and pulling it out when you think, oh, no, that's a reverse needle. So yeah, no, you, it definitely takes a shift of, um, of expectation and mindset when you use your reverse needle. Um, Debbie says, I'm such an idiot. I forgot we were meeting tonight. Oh, Debbie, you're here and you can watch it over and over as many times as you want. Um, Liz says, why do some needles with the same gauge feel different from other shops? Are some cheaply made? For example, when I first started felting, I bought some of Amazon and compared to yours, they would feel rubbish to use now. So I will talk about this in a minute. Different manufacturers and cheaper brands make them so very different. That's right. I was organizing felting supplies, so shall forgive myself. Oh, says Debbie. Well, you are for forgiven anyway, whether you were um, just dawdling and doing whatever you like or doing felting bits. Um, Katrina says, same. Once you go to good quality needles, you can't go back to those cheap ones. That is why people get discouraged with the cheap beginner kits from um, Amazon roving and subpar sub needles make it very hard. Dawn says, I will just say that there are also people who sell good quality needles on Amazon. I just need to put that in there. But um, yes, there is definitely a difference between cheaply made needles and um, needles of a certain uh, quality. And it is it is often it's in the steel, actually. So the needles that you're using are made from stainless steel. And as you know, steel comes in different qualities. So I think that if you buy good quality needles, and we certainly uh, can vouch for our needles, you also get um, the good quality steel. And it's in the precision of how the notches are placed. There are, um, there's so much more technical, um, bit, so much more technical data to it. Also how, how many notches you have got and how far they are spaced and how long the, the, the working part of the needle is. So there, are, all I can say is if you want to get into these technicalities, it, it probably will boggle your mind. All I can say is buy needles from us and you will never have to worry about it ever again. Um, <clears throat> uh, so some of our needles are uh, German made as well, I will just say, not that I'm biased in the slightest, but um, it is a very good company. Um, but not all of them. We also buy them um, um, from other sources in, within Europe. Sheila says, hi, sorry I'm late, but I can at least see the tutorial. Katrina says, you catch everything on replay. That's it. Um, that's it, really. So um, if there are any more questions about this, fire away. I hope that those of you who have had... Um, um, who haven't made friends with the silk clay yet will make friends with the silk clay. Trust me, you can you can make such a difference by just adding a drop of water or two into it. And um, the one that I've just um, put back in the bag is now just how I want it. It's nice and um, and really, you can really really get a nice. Um, let's just to prove this again. Um, it it will come smooth. Now you can also use a little bit of water. If you have a, an area here that you need to smooth out so just 
um, put a bit of water on your finger and then smooth it out where you want it to smooth and that way you can get it exactly how you want it um, look I've got very very um, colored in fingers so it's going to be um, coloring off now um, it's definitely not white anymore but yeah you can it, it the, the the more water you put in there the more supple it will become and the more obliging it will be and look you can you can um, you can really work with it quite easily so even when you have to scrunch it all up again to make it into a ball again it will just do it but tiny amounts of water don't put too much in it because what will happen if you do this let's just do it I show you let's make it really really wet just so that you can see what happens if you go overboard with the water. It is, after all, clay. I'm just going to put that down. If you go overboard with with it, it, it sort of becomes quite squelchy and wet. And sometimes it can go get so... Um, look, it comes apart in my hand, can you see? But don't worry about that either. Just keep at it. Even if you feel, oh my God, what have I done? It's just completely getting, it's now disintegrating. Because like with clay, it absorbs the water and it will be fine again. But if you need to just give it a really good um, soaking of water. And even if this happens, can you see that in my hand? Um, it will pick it all up again. It's a bit like dough. Um, it sort of picks up all the bits in t again and um, and it will just oh my goodness I've got such dirty hands look at this you see this this can happen if you put too much water into it but it it will it's not therefore it's not spoiled trust me just keep rolling it and kneading it and it will come good again and it will pick up all of the bits on your hand again once it's uh, sort of um, got back to its usual consistency and um, you don't need to worry about throwing it away it's now back to normal again even if you thought that you couldn't use it anymore there we go it's back to usable a usable usable consistency and your hands will feel nice and dry again as well so that's it so store it in your bag with a bit of water with a drop of water or if you have a, a container with a lid put it in that but just add a tiny bit of water literally a drop so what I do is I just dip my finger in a couple of times that will do close the bag up and then if you can I would even so I've got like a couple of drops in there just tie it up even after that so that it's completely or as much waterproof as you uh, sorry airtight as you can make it and um, and that's it you can always add some washi tape around it or some center tape or an elastic band or whatever you um, can find and um, and keep it nice and safe so hopefully this has been um, useful um, not just learning more about different needles but also how you can make your own needle holders and how you can model with uh, silk clay so if you've got any other questions and just pop them uh, into the comments or um, ask us questions directly um, just gonna see if there's any more I've done that with black silk clay for the bear's nose my hands were covered in black particles but then if you rub it it just picks it all up again you just have to persevere I'm going to be making these with my 10 year old granddaughter on Thursday oh that's nice uh, Lane says thanks Steffi the water is where I was going wrong I wasn't using enough ah okay um, and storing it with a little bit of water helps too I'll have a go at making some tomorrow morning says Lorna um, um, you'll be able to see the whole thing repeated on the Makers Flock group video so you can right I'm going to leave it here I'm going to go and have my supper now so take care everybody and um, stay stay safe stay well don't get ill not like me and um, and if you are ill rest right see you soon bye